QLC plus and OSC commands. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to send OSC or open sound control commands from my show control software over to QLC plus. So when I'm doing a production, I use my show control software to play back my audio cues. At the same time, I use it to send commands to my lighting software to go to a specific lighting cue. At the same time, I use it to send commands to another laptop that's doing projections. So this way I can synchronize my audio cues with my lighting cues with my projections. And the great thing about OSC or Open Sound Control is it's simply transmitted over your local IP network. So assuming that you have your programs on computers that have an internet connection, either CAT5 or wirelessly, you're able to send these commands back and forth. It doesn't require any special interfaces or cabling like MIDI does. So what we need to do then is be able to have my show control computer communicate with my computer that has QLC lighting software on it. In this case, I have both sets of software on the same computer, but usually these, these would be two different computers. So I'm going to go to my show control program first of all, go to my communication setup, and I'm going to go to UDP. UDP is the protocol that you would normally use to send OSC messages over a local network. You can also use TCP. But in this case, I'm going to set up UDP1. Now, in this box, I need to enter the address of the computer that I'm sending commands to. In this case, I'm actually sending it to the same computer, but keep in mind, this would be the address of the computer that QLC is on. So I put in the address 10.0.0.30 and then enter a port number. 8000 seems to work fairly well and then just say OK. Now I need to set up the communication over here so my show control program can communicate with QLC+. So I go to my Inputs Outputs tab. First of all, you're going to find the computer that is sending the messages to QLC+. So I'm going to look for that computer. If you're using two different computers, you need to look for the IP address of the computer that's going to be sending the OSC commands to QLC+. And I'm going to put a check mark here that I'm looking for input from this particular computer. Now, highlight this, click on your toolbox, and look here. So this is the IP address of the computer that's sending the OSC commands, and then the port number that I need to listen to. So remember over here, we said we're sending the information on port number 8000. Well, I need to tell QLC Plus, listen to port 8000. That's where the commands are going to be coming from, and then simply click OK. All right, so now we've got the two programs communicating with each other. When I'm going to design a set of OSC commands, I'm basically taking a look at my virtual console setup and making a list of commands that I want to be able to send. So I want to have commands that are going to activate these buttons. I want to have commands that are going to activate my start, stop, previous, and next buttons on my queue list. I want to have a command that will allow me to control this fader. And I'll need a set of commands to access these fade time buttons that I've created down here. When you're sending OSC commands, there's a syntax to it. And it's basically two parts. There's an address or locator for the particular button or fader that it's going to be assigned to and then data. The nice thing about QLC Plus is you can name anything, anything that you want it to name as far as that address goes. But I'll have a plan here. Now, my advice is to create what we call a profile. So let's go back to inputs and outputs, my profile tab, and I've created a profile called generic OSC demo for my virtual console layout. 
So let's take a look at this profile. So I'm selecting it. I'm going to click the edit button. There's the name generic OSC demo. I'm telling QSC Plus that the type of profile this is is going to be an OSC or open sound control profile. Then I'm looking at my channels and you can see I've already gone in and created a number of addresses that I'm going to use to associate buttons and faders with OSC commands. And you can see these addresses such as slash page one slash button four. I'm going to assign that to button four. Uh, slash page one slash fade time slash four. Uh, that's going to be my identifier for the four second button in the fade time. Slash page one slash fader slash master. That's going to be my identifier for the fader that's on my virtual console page slash page one slash start that's going to be my address or identifier for the start button in my queue list all right so you get the idea these are considered to be osc addresses rather than typing these in manually which you can do by hitting the plus key i recommend doing this using the wizard because then QSC will read the command and will automatically assign a channel number to it. Here's how you do that. First of all, I'm going to turn on the wizard, which basically tells QLC Plus, listen, I'm going to send you some OSC commands, and when you receive them, I want you to create a button or a slider to match with that command so we can associate it later. So let's say we're going to create a new button on my virtual console. So I need to create a new address or OSC command for that. So it's listening. I go back over to my show control software. I'm going to go to my comms. I'm going to be go to my serial network command here. No, I'm going to select up here where it says 000. And there won't be any command in there when I select it. Port 1, I'm going to select UDP 1 because that's by port where I'm sending my OSC commands. Now I'm going to put in a new address here. I'm going to say slash page one slash bad slash button. And again, you can call these whatever you want to call them. It makes a lot of sense to make sure that the address helps you identify what the item is. So when you're going back and associating things, you can say, oh, that belongs to this particular button. Now, one more thing we need to do, spacebar one, and the one is our piece of data. So an OSC command has an address and data. That one is an integer, or that's data. Now, I'm gonna just send this command over and, and uh, QLC plus is listening. Notice that it automatically created a, an entry for that and assigned it a channel number. So there it is, slash page one, slash bad, slash button, now I'm going to turn off the wizard and just say OK. When I go back to my virtual console now, I can simply add a button here. And let's say I'm going to associate this button with, um, I don't know, my red color. Say OK. And it automatically is going to give it the name red. All right, and I can increase the font size on that so I can see it a little bit better. There's our red button that's going to turn on red lights. Now, to associate this with an OSC command, the one that we just created, I double-click external input. That's going to be our OSC command coming in. I go to choose. There's my generic OSC profile. Open this up. Let's look for bad button there it is right there and select OK. So now this button is associated with that OSC command. If I have QLC Plus running and I send that command, it's going to turn this button on. Let's do that. There's my command slash page one slash bad slash button and my you do need to include the space and the, the number one, the integer, as a piece of data. And now when I click send this command, it turns on that red button. If I send it again, it will turn off the button. If the integer 
number here, the data number is one, it will press the button. If it's zero, it will not press the button, okay? So now I've created a number of commands on here. Here's my command for button four, and you can see it's slash page one, slash button four, space, and then there's my data, one. So if I press this or if I fire this command from my show control, it's going to turn on button four. There we go. And I can actually bring up my lights so you can see that come up. Button one, you can see the information there. There's the address. There's the data. We send it. It's going to go to button one, which is going to go to the aqua color. Let me just turn up my intensity here so you can see the aqua color a little bit better. This one is going to go to button two when I fire that command, which is basically the blackout. So you get the idea. And again, if you fire a button or if I send this command the first time, it's going to turn the button on. So my aqua comes on. If I send that command again, it's like pushing the button again. So then the button would go off. So that's how you do that. Now, a little something specific about the cue list down here, the cue list buttons. Let's go back to the profile for a minute. And this is something specific that you need to do with the cue list buttons. So I'm going to go out of run mode for a minute. Go back to my profile. OSC generic demo. Click on here. Channels. My cue list buttons, which are start, stop, next, and previous. On the start button, put a check mark in here where it says generate an extra press or release when toggled. Do the same thing for the stop, the next, and the previous. Otherwise, those buttons won't work correctly. The other buttons will work fine, but in the cue list buttons, make sure that you put that check mark in here. So let's take a look back to virtual console, back in run mode. I'm going to send my start command, which is going to basically press this button. You can see my cue list starts. Now I'm going to send my next command, slash page one, slash next, and then space, and then again, the data one, the integer one. Next, you can see it goes to the next queue. I can select that again, send next again, select that again, send next again. I can go to previous, send the previous command, which would send this button goes back a button and then I can also send my stop command which would press that button there and if you're familiar with QLC plus if you press the stop button again it goes back to the top of the queue list which I will do so there we have control of the actual queue list most often this is the way I set up my shows I just keep sending that next command as I progress through and match that up with all my audio cues but, I mean, you could use buttons to turn on lights for your show. Now, in this particular case here, uh, if I was using buttons, and let's say I do a uh, button four, and I cue that up, and I'll bring my lights up. There they are green. And I do, next one, I have button one queued up, and that goes to aqua. All right. By using my fade time buttons, I can change the fade time between these buttons. So instead of jumping from green to aqua, I can do fade time three. You can see my fade time's changed to three. Now it'll take three seconds for the green to fade in, and then three seconds for the aqua to fade in. So I have OSC commands for these. If we go down here, we can look at it. The OSC command for fade time, let me set this back to zero. My OSC command for fade time three is slash page one slash fade time slash three. So that number three is still part of the address space one. Okay, and that's the data that tells me, tells this command to press that button. So if I fire fade time three, if you watch here, you'll see that the fade time goes to three seconds. So I can actually use that then to fire different fade times and then I can fire my green button again, let's say button four. And since the fade time is set to three, it's going to go to fade time three. Now I could set my fade time, fire this command to set the fade time to zero. 
see it go to zero. Now I get fire button one again, and it's going to jump to the aqua command. So you could see, if you wanted to, how you could use buttons and fade times and using OSC commands to control those. Now one other item on here, we do have a fader. And what I've done is I've set up this fader to be a master fader for the light levels. So whether the lighting cues are coming from buttons or whether they're coming from the cue list, this becomes a submaster fader that controls the level of all the lights. And I just included this to show you that you can also control this through OSC commands. The fader address, if you remember, is slash page one, slash fader, slash master. And then you send your data after that. So now this works a little bit differently. Let me bring up my CO command up here again. All right. So now I have up the command to send this. And if you watch, um, if I use an integer number that's not a decimal, such as 200, it will adjust the fader to the DMX value. So DMX value is from 0 to 255, 0 being lights out and 255 being lights full. I do have my, this set the percentage up here, but if I send this 200 value, it's going to send DMX value of 200. And you'll see this adjusted down, and the DMX value of 200 is approximately 78%. If I change this to 100 and send that command, I believe that'll send that from that top bar, you see this jump down to 100. If I change this to 255, that's going to be maximum, and that'll set that up to 100%. So if you're just typing in whole numbers, it will set the fader to DMX values. If you use a decimal, it will set it to percentage. So if I say 0 0.50 and send that command, it will set it to about 50%. If I set it to 0.75, it will set it to 75%. So if you'd like to work with percentage values instead of DMX values, simply use a decimal point for that. If I set it to 1.0 now 1.0 that is going to be full all right so again i'm using the decimal but that's equivalent to like 100 percent all right so either use whole numbers which is integers and then you, that would be dmx value or if you use the decimal value like 0 0.5 0 0.7 or 1.0 then it's going to set it to percentage Hopefully this has helped with your understanding of this. I find this very, very helpful to coordinate, again, every aspect of my show, the audio cues, the lighting, and my projections.